Am I the a-hole for taking my friend to court after she kicked me out of the bridal party for cutting my hair? For my friend's three-day wedding, I had to buy three different dresses, including alterations and specific shoes, which totaled over $700. She also wanted specific hairstyles for each day. Unfortunately, starting in March, my hair started to deteriorate. Due to health reasons, my hair was falling out in chunks, and in May, I made a difficult decision to cut my hair. I told a bride about my decision two weeks before the wedding, and she didn't say anything bad. The following week, she came over to my house, and when she was about to leave, she brought up that she was so concerned about my haircut. And I told her it would look good even though I wouldn't be uniform with the other bridesmaids. Then the following day, I received this message. After our recent conversations, I'd like to remind you of my boundaries. I've been very accommodating and graceful, but I can't allow you to disrespect me. As you know, my wedding has been something I've dreamt of for many years. Has been that I have invested a lot of money into the video and photos of this day. And as we reflect on this day in the future, we want to see our vision reflected in the memories. Since I asked each of you to be bridesmaid in 2019, I've been very clear and very communicative in my request. The timing of your decision to cut your hair and not inform me in advance is very upsetting to me. I would have felt respected if you had communicated with me more than a week prior to the wedding, so we could have worked together to find a collaborative solution. Your inconsistencies have concerned me, and while I sympathize with your health concerns, I'm not willing to compromise my vision to accommodate you or anyone else. If you have informed me in advance, we could have found a better solution. Since this is something you can no longer fully commit to, I need you to please step down from participating in my wedding. This was three days before the wedding. I immediately sent her and her husband an invoice asking them to reimburse for the dresses and shoes. Keep in mind that one of the dresses is still in her possession even though I paid for it. Neither of them replied and so I decided to take it to the court. I was told I was inconsistent and selfish after I spent the past two weeks helping her plan a wedding shower. I worked with another bridesmaid to surprise her with a bridal shower after our bachelor trip had to be cancelled. I spent hours helping her out with wedding details. When she asked me to help her tone up before the wedding, I sent her a personalized workout program and even went with her to the gym to show her the ropes. When I agreed to be her bridesmaid, I was more than willing to oblige with what she asked, even if at times it was a lot of time and money. So, am I the a-hole for taking her to court because she kicked me out for cutting my hair? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Should have had a lawsuit served to her at the altar. Do you take your bridezilla to be your lawfully served wife? Not the a-hole. I mean, not the a-hole. She's a massive A and should pay you the money. But she won't, because she's a massive entitled A. But I'm guessing you don't have any sort of written contract? Depending on verbal contract laws where you are, I suppose you can argue that expenses were incurred on the agreement that you were in a bridal party. On the other hand, if she's been as much of a control freak bridezilla as you say, she might be able to show evidence that a reasonable person would know that in this wedding, changing physical appearance would be seen as a breach of expectations by making themselves unsuitable for the bridal party. It's going to be hell of a thing to argue successfully in court. There's no contract or verbal contract. I had obliged to every single thing she wanted. Dresses, shoes, makeup, jewelry. The last day of the wedding was a Monday, so I even took off work. The only thing was my hair. I physically could no longer do any of the hairstyles, and wigs are just too expensive. And because of how much I had already spent, I couldn't afford one. I would seek some form of legal advice. You'd have had what a lot of places would have considered a verbal contract, in that you agreed to be a bridesmaid and participate in the wedding with the understanding you'd have to buy X things in order to do it. But there won't be anything about reimbursement, I imagine. As for the evidence, at a guess, you might have more than you think, if you have emails slash messages being all, to be a bridesmaid, you need to buy X and X and X, etc. On the other hand, if she detailed hairstyles you now can't achieve, offered a wig solution or specified not to cut slash dye hair, it might be seen as a breach. Like I said, get legal advice. Luckily, I had friends who are in the legal system, and they've helped me out and helped me prepare my case. I don't have a court date yet, and probably won't for a while because of COVID, but I'm prepared for it all, and have all my evidence gathered from emails, texts, invoices, witnesses, etc. Not today, Hall. Not one bit. I can't allow you to disrespect me. And then she turns around and utterly disrespects you and your friendship. 
What a horrible, heartless friend she is. You've done your absolute best to be involved with her wedding slash bridal shower, and helping her so much in addition to paying hundreds for your dresses, etc. And she kicks you out because of your hair? For which you have an extremely valid reason for cutting. And even if you didn't, it'd still be absolutely ridiculous for her to do and say all this. I'm baffled. I can only imagine how you're feeling. All the best to you. Next story. Am I the a-hole for enforcing a country club's dress code and not changing my venue? I'm getting married in February at a country club my fiancé's parents belong to. The club has a strict dress code in their dining area, even for events. Jacket, ties, and slacks slash khakis for men. Dresses or slacks slash khakis at a blouse for women. Kids are dresses, slacks and nice shirts. No logos. I put this on to save the date in case it would be an issue. Keep in mind, it's not a rule I created. Now, my younger sister is in college, and her standard outfit is basketball shorts and a t-shirt. I told her she didn't have to wear a dress, but slacks or khakis and a nice top. She told me no. I said it was strictly enforced, but she said she didn't care. I told her that it would mean a great deal to me and I could help her find something comfy. She still refused. So I asked why this was so important. And she said she thinks dress codes are stupid and she's not conforming. In the end, after constant back and forth, she said she's not coming. I said that really upset me as we we're very close and I wanted her there. My mom says I should just change the venue, but I told her we can't with how close the wedding is. My in-laws paid for it and they'd lose their deposit. She told me that I should ask for an exception to be made, but the club said no. My mom says I'm forgetting my roots to impress my fancy in-laws. Am I the a-hole? Changed the entire venue? For one person? Your sister isn't a non-conformist. She wants others to conform to her. Not the a-hole. You were very open with her and gave her plenty of options. Also, khakis and a nice shirt isn't that strict of a dress code. My parents and other siblings also hate the dress code, but were willing to go along. Now that sister is refusing, they feel less alone. Um, do they hate the dress code or are they envious that you're marrying a wealthier family? I don't know if that's that. They're all just very laid back. Now it cares for the future or what comes. They don't care if people hate them. When they met my future in-laws, we went to this nice place with no dress code. But it's implied you dress up. My family showed up in jeans, shorts. My dad wore a t-shirt advertising a beer company. Not today, home. Forget any written code. Basketball shorts and a t-shirt are not appropriate wear for a wedding guest. They aren't appropriate for most jobs at all. Not sure what her future is going to be if she must wear basketball shorts all the time. Even an entry-level fast food, retail, or construction jobs all require pants. Not today, home. Your sister needs to learn that certain events require certain rules to be followed. She's an adult, isn't she? She's 22. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to take off my engagement ring for my sister? I, female 26, recently lost my fiancé, male 28, in a car accident. My sister's, female 23, boyfriend, male 25, who happened to be my fiancé's brother, was also lost in that accident. It was very sudden and overwhelming for both me and my sister, and we are still both struggling after weeks of grieving. I'm still having trouble processing that I will never be able to marry him, and I have been wearing the engagement ring every day since he passed. It has been a very difficult few weeks for my sister and I, and we have been trying to cope together since. But yesterday, we had a fight about my ring. She asked me if I was ever going to take the ring off, and told me that I was being selfish for wearing that ring. She insisted that she was never able to get engaged or get married to her boyfriend, and that my fiancé was dead so I wouldn't be getting married to him anytime soon, so I shouldn't wear it. I don't know if it was the grief talking, but either way, I got angry real fast and flipped out on her. Yes, wearing the ring won't bring him back, but it was the last thing he gave me before he died. I'm not sorry for wanting to treasure that ring even if there will never be a wedding ring to accompany it. I argued this, but it only made her angrier and our argument escalated. She left my apartment after that in a rage. We are both suffering from our grief, and I have no right to claim I have it worse. But I believe I was justified in yelling at her for what she said, and that she shouldn't have been so hurtful to me like that. 
My family, however, doesn't agree. And I received several texts telling me that I was out of line for what I said. Am I the a-hole Reddit? Keep your ring. Wear it with pride and be proud of the love it will forever hold. You and your sister have suffered a terrible, terrible loss. And while she's grieving, I don't think she means to be so cruel. At least I hope not. Maybe she just was never given something sentimental from her boyfriend. So she's just upset she has nothing to hold or wear daily like you do. May I suggest a locket for both of you? Maybe matching sets each with pictures of your late loves inside? Again, I am so sorry for your loss. Grieve how you wish. You will grieve differently. But you do not have to change how you give for someone else's comfort. Not day hole. 100% this. Opie, she, like you, is in the middle of the grieving process. I don't think she meant to be cruel. And I don't believe you did either. You are reacting to her. You both need time, understanding, and maybe therapy. Cherish your ring and the love it holds. No a-holes here. Not day hole. You grieve how you need to. You got something she didn't, but you both missed out on so much. Let her know you are sorry she feels that way, but you need to grieve how you need to grieve. And for both, I would seek out professional grief counseling. Their relationship reminds me of my aunt's and uncle's relationships. Two sisters married to brothers. They both were beautiful couples that stayed together for decades until death came. To think that beauty was cut so short and suddenly so tragic. I hope they find peace and new love in their lives. I am so sorry for your losses. Grief affects everyone differently, and although it was out of line for her to ask you to stop wearing the ring, it sounds like it is the grief talking, assuming that this is not normal behavior for her. It was within your right to push back, and understandable that you would want to wear something so dear to you and your fiancé's memory. No a-holes here. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for spending a large amount of money in a trip with my dad instead of paying the debt on my boyfriend's house? I, 29 female, recently got in a fight with my boyfriend, 30 male, and his family because I refused to spend my savings in house payments that could result in him getting kicked out of the house. So, context. I've dealt with mental health problems all my life. But when I turned 20, I was at my worst. Due to that, I couldn't maintain a stable job while studying in college. My parents have always been supportive of me. They let me live with them and my dad paid for my psychologist medicine, all my college education, and maintained me until I was 24, while also taking care of my mom and my three younger siblings. He's a super hard-working man, and I think he enjoys and loves to give me and my siblings the best he can. Top-tier parenting, and I love him to death. Fast forward to this year. I have a stable job that pays really well, and I have been saving money for the past five years because I wanted to do something for my dad as a thank you for all the sacrifices he has done for me. His dream has always been to go to Disney World. We are not from the USA, and stay in one of those fancy hotels, but he was never able to do it. And now that he is retired, he thought he would never be able to. So I have been saving money in secret to make it happen, and the only one that knew about my savings was my mom, and she loved the idea. I've been with my boyfriend for one and a half years now. He has a good job, but he is not the best at taking care of his finances. He bought his house before we meet, and he is still paying for it. But due to his poor management of money, he starts accumulating debt due to house payments. But a few weeks ago, he told me that there is a chance of him losing his house if he doesn't pay the debt. Last week, I finally reached my goal and had enough money to take my dad to his dream trip. Just the two of us. I told my boyfriend that I was really exotic, but he was livid. It asked me how could I be so selfish and go on a stupid vacation trip when he is about to get kicked out of his house. He also told me that if we were in for the long run, I should help him to get out of his debt because that could eventually be my house too. We don't live together. I live in a small apartment. He also told me that his trust was betrayed because I've been hiding the savings from him and that a good partner does not do that. I told him that it was not my responsibility to pay for his debt, but he kept yelling at me. So I left. He told his mom and sister about it and now both of them have been harassing me going to my apartment and to my work telling me how horrible I am for not helping him and trying to convince me to pay his debt. I get that my boyfriend is going through a hard time, but this is something I've been working really hard to achieve. And since my dad is starting to have difficulties walking, with his eyesight and his health in general is getting worse, I don't want to wait any longer to take him on his trip. Am I the a-hole? Not a-hole. 
but you were breaking up with him, right? You can't continue to be with someone that's so controlling and abusive. He sends his family to your house to harass you into giving him your hard-earned money, when he can't even manage his own finances. Could you just imagine what he would be like if you lived with him? If the example you have of a good and decent man is your father, why would you choose to be with the opposite of that? Don't accept less than what you have been raised to expect. If you will, for example, one guy ended his girlfriend and her kids because she wouldn't give him half her $600 stimulus check. So not stay home and get out of there. I feel like this is something that he and the family will always hold over your head if they can stay that level-headed. Give your dad's gift and say goodbye to deadbeat boy toy. Horrifying. OP is a good person and deserves better. And it was smart not to tell her terrible with the money boyfriend about her savings. It's not his money and none of his business. Not day home. The minute I read that you don't live together and he is only your boyfriend, he has no say in your finances. His house, his problem. He made his own mess. I hope your trip to Disney World is super fun for your father and you. Also, his mom and sister are over the line. Like restraining order worth. If they are so concerned, they can bail him out themselves. Actually, just dump the guy because this is just one big red flag about controlling your money. The idea that is asking her to put money to his house is bad enough, but to demand Opie's hard-earned money with no offer to give her an equity stake in said house? Absolutely freaking unbelievable. Where do people find this kind of entitlement? Your boyfriend is showing his true colors. He expects you to forgo your plans for his lack of planning. His dad's lack of budgeting is on him, not you. Dump him. Take the trip with your dad and enjoy. Just as importantly, so is his family. Opie can expect to be harassed anytime he wants something she's unwilling to give.